proud of old Butch. She entered him in a show, and he became an overnight sensation among the judges. The result was the judges not only awarded old Butch the Nobel Peace Prize, they also <laughs> awarded him the Pulitzer Prize as well. Clearly, old Butch was a politician in the making. Who else but a politician? could figure out how to win two of the most coveted awards on our planet by being the best at sneaking up on the unsuspecting populace and screwing them when they weren't paying attention. Vote carefully in the next election. You can't always hear the bells. If you don't send this on, your chicken. No yoke. It's cute. It's funny. I just got it from a listener. <laughs> it's hilariously funny. Butch the Rooster, very funny. Sometimes you have to resort to like stage canned humor. It's certainly more interesting than looking at Wolf Blitzer. I mean, I'd rather talk about a rooster than Wolf Blitzer. Or whatever. Let's stop right there. Now, the person who opposes shutting down the internet or controlling it to control the Islamo fascists the most is, of course, the predictable the the predictable uh, Rand Paul, who is now has a two percent rate two percent uh, rating. I told you he was a bizarro. Many of you love him because, you know, his politics are good. He's a nut job, a total nutcase. You know, him and his father are wonderful people, but they're not electable. Okay, maybe you're electable in their, in their home state. But they look like uh, mad roosters. If you, if you look at Rand Paul, if you look at the hairdo, he looks like a mad rooster. I, whatever, I don't have to say this stuff to get your attention. That's all. He's nuts. And he's, he's miserably unhappy because he fell in the ratings. And he attacks Trump. All he does is attack Trump. He's the only one who came back with a, a, a retort saying, you shouldn't touch the Internet. And he, he's giving us the doxy of the libertarian, the libertarian doxy. If you don't know what doxy means, I can't help you. 855-407-282 is my phone number. My website is michaelsavage.com. And the phone number, I forgot to give you that, is 855-407-400-SAVAGE. And if you get on this show, you'll reach more people than you've met in your entire life. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, so I, weeks ago, I said we need to get the billionaires who run Twitter, Facebook, all of these companies, I said it on this program, need to be marshaled to fight the war against the Islamo-fascists. I said they shouldn't have the license to just rake in the money without uh, protecting us by controlling their operations and denoting which of them are being used, you know, which highways, as it were, are being used by which terrorists and turn it over to the government. That's what I said. So Trump basically said the same thing, and he was attacked for it by the nutty Rand Paul. Let's listen to the nutty Rand Paul, and I think it's six. Go ahead, please. Is Donald Trump a serious candidate? <laughs> The reason I ask this is, if you're going to close the Internet, realize, America, what that entails. That entails getting rid of the First Amendment, okay? It's no small feat. If you are going to kill didn't say the close families it, of terrorists, realize that there's something called the Geneva Convention we're going to have to pull out of. It would defy every oh, norm God. that is America. So... They can kill us, but we can't kill them. That's what you're saying. And as far as the Internet is concerned, I'm not talking about closing the Internet. I'm talking about parts of Syria, parts of Iraq, where ISIS is spotting it. Now, you could close it. What I like even better than right. that is get getting our smartest. All right, right. He said get the smart people of Silicon Valley who are raking in the trillions, who are not helping in the war on terror at all. And they should be forced to do so. And that means Google, the Google boys who fly in the 767, which they park at the uh, Ames Air Force Base for free or a dollar a year, courtesy of Nancy Pelosi's largesse. The airplane was used, by the way, to fly an entourage to Nancy Pelosi's daughter's wedding a number of years ago. You don't know anything about that, nor should you, but you just learned about it. Oh, yeah, years ago, not too many years ago, uh, Google 767 which is parked on a federal facility for free, or a buck a year, was used to transport the entourage of Nancy Pelosi's wedding to some location in Utah, I believe, on the Google jet. Isn't that nice to have friends in high places? Well, it goes back to the 60s. I get by with a little help for my friends, and I get high with a little help for my friends. It's a Beatles song. Only these people actually live the life that the Beatles sang about. But we're no longer living in the yellow submarine, are we? 
You know, we are all in the yellow submarine. No, we're not all in the yellow submarine. The submarine could, could implode from uh, what uh, the level of incompetence that we have in this government. How is the head of the Department of Homeland Security not fired? The man failed us at least, at least in San Bernardino, and he still has his job. How is it possible? They said the second biggest terrorist attack on American soil since 9-11, and that moron still has his job. Why? Because there's no opposition party. There's no opposition press. Nobody demands it. That's why. The only one, and I think there's a huge, huge schism in this government, not I think I know by what I read and what I see. There is a huge schism in this government as evidenced by what the FBI director is trying to to communicate to America and the world. He's one of the few willing to stand up to the tyrant, the snake in the White House. He's the only one willing to stand up to the snake. And the reason may be because he has a tenure, tenured position as it, as it is. He also has extremely high regard from members of both Democrat and Republican parties. Everyone knows he's certainly the cleanest man in Washington. And that's FBI Director Comey. He's the only one who's even hinting at how bad it is. And it's much worse than he's telling us. That's the truth. He's almost trying to signal. He strikes me as a captive inside a government. And he's trying to signal to us how dangerous the waters really are, despite the nice talk from the other phonies. That's what I see going on. So now let's get back to this issue of the Internet. Tell me how you would stop ISIS if you didn't stop them from using Twitter and Facebook. How would you do it? I mean, uh, you know, it's easy to say in a vacuum, no, we don't want it to interfere with the Internet. It's very nice, but way past that point. Not only do we have to control the Internet, but we also have to use propaganda to smear them and to make them look like the vermin that they are. In, in World War II, I, I will remind you, because I'm a student of history, I've seen the books that were done to categorize the Germans and the Japanese as the monsters they were with regard to being our enemy. The caricatures, the stereotypes were magnified, and I don't have to spell them out here. And that was to turn them into an object rather than a person, so that when our boys went out to fight them on the battlefield, they were better able to kill them rather than be killed. That's what war requires. We don't have a propaganda campaign. We are afraid to even say that they're Islamo-fascists. We have to define them as they are. They are subhumans. They're not even human beings. They are subhumans. Now, why do I say that? Let me ask you good liberals if raping an eight-year-old girl until she bleeds to death is the behavior of a human being. Let me ask you people, because we heard this testimony last week in Congress from a Yazidi leader, in case you're a little too fine and refined to hear this stuff of what they're actually doing on the ground. I don't even want to read the rest of it because there are children who listen to this show. It's beyond the horror movie put out by Spielberg. It's beyond anything that Stephen King could ever write. That's what they're doing. Take your mind and magnify it to the nth degree of horror. <clears throat> That's what these people are doing to uh, um, religious minorities, Christians, Yazidis. You tell me they're human beings? I would say that they're subhuman beings. When they start behaving like this on a regular basis as a group, rather than as an individual psychopath who may do it once in a while. But instead, when you have an entire army doing it, as a matter of course, I would say the entire army is subhuman. And let me go a step further. Trump said he would kill them and, and, his, and their families. What's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that? What, do you think the families are sacred? You didn't see it was a woman who led the, uh, the San Bernardino thing last week? What, is a woman suddenly sacred? When she wants to blow your children up in a daycare center? And what about the little brats that they produce? They teach to hate and kill from the cradle to the grave. What, do you, you want them to grow up for what? So they can come here as, a, as an illegal alien and blow your children up? Or blow you up in an old age? Why, what's wrong with you people? I know what's wrong. You're never going to change. It's not, you're not going to change in your lifetime unless there's another 9-11, God forbid. Ten times bigger than 9-11, maybe you'll wake up. And even then, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I think the American people are so drugged and so drugged and so entertained that unless the bomb goes off under their feet, they won't even care about it. That's what I truly and depressingly have to tell you. I think that we have become so atomized, separated, alienated from reality that it's almost impossible to wake you up. 
many of you say, no, no, I know what's going on, Mike, you're right. This, and I'm not talking about the diehard audience that listens to the show and buys my books, you know, Government Zero and whatnot, and knows what's going on. You look around the streets and you tell me that those people are awake? They're not awake. They're zombies. They may look nice in a suit and tie or a nice dress and a pair of shoes, but they're zombies. They don't want to know what's going on. And anyone who says anything that requires any forcefulness that's real, they consider you the barbarian. They rather would call, they'd rather call you the barbarian than those who are raping eight-year-old girls till they bleed to death, by the way. So I say yes, use maximum measures to destroy them. If that means carpet bombing them and collateral damage, well, that means that. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't pinpoint... Uh, an ISIS member without killing family members as well and killing innocent people, unfortunately, because they surround themselves with innocent people. Ask the IDF. Ask the Israeli Defense Forces what their experience have been in fighting Hezbollah and others about using human shields. You'll find out what real warfare is all about. But I don't need to go down that road. I think we should stick to the simple topic of the Internet. I'd like to hear some of the arguments of why you shouldn't control portions of the Internet in order to stop them from spreading their message of hatred. So, that's the topic for right now. 855-407-282 is the phone number. George on WABC, first up this hour. Go ahead, please. Hi, Dr. Savage. I really respect what you do, and uh, um, I just want to tell you that that's the first thing we should do is darken those people, shut the Internet down. It's perfectly capable of doing that. The government controls that. And it's controlled through the... Wait, 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 hold on. You don't mean shut the Internet down, do you? Absolutely. In certain sections, we're very capable of, of doing... Oh, that. oh, you mean like shut it down in Syria, for example, in northern Iraq. That's what you mean. I had a close relative that controlled the Internet in Afghanistan. He worked for a big telecommunication company that contracted with the Army. When the serviceman was killed in Afghanistan, he would pull the plug on the Internet. He actually would pull the plug on the Internet so that when... Uh, that no one would find out back home that the servicemen had perished before the knock was on the door. We're perfectly capable of doing that. All right, so let, let, let's just follow this out. Let's use our brains. We shut the Internet off in, in Syria. We shut it off in northern Iraq. Does that stop the jihadis in Los Angeles from communicating with their friends in Washington, D.C.? Absolutely not. It is a so how do, we shut them? How, do we shut, how do we shut the Islamo-fascists down in this country? Well, like you said, their Twitter accounts and their email accounts and any other way they used to communicate. But I think we got to start over there where they're, where they're uh, taking our innocent children from Australia and from America and getting them over there. And well, that's what Trump said. And you know that that's what he meant. He didn't mean shut it down in America, but the demagogue, Rand Paul, made it sound like he wanted to shut the Internet down in America. Trump said, I'm talking about Iraq and Syria. That's what he said in plain English. And my point is, it's, we're perfectly capable of doing that, shutting, shutting it down in sections, keeping those people from communicating with each other, communicating with the, with the jihadists in America, and stealing our children. I think it's pretty clear that that needs to be done, and it needs to be done yesterday. And I'm sending you a gift for the holidays, which is Government Zero, the most important book of our time. On to the next caller, WBAP Eric. Welcome to the program. Hold on, i got to hit the right button. I have an announcement to make, by the way, about WBAP. I guess I can make it in, in a day or two. I don't know if I can do it today. Not yet. Okay. Eric, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. All right. Nice to talk to you, Dr. Savage. Um, like you were just saying, what if it's somebody already here in San Francisco talking to their buddies in D.C.? That's where I would have an issue. Like, Because let's just say Trump gets in, he has his way, he makes that happen. And um, a few years down the road, midterms hit and everything the house and senate turns blue and you get another sorority girl or a jay johnson and appointed to a certain position where all it takes is their interpretation of a certain definition like the word terrorist or the word potential to determine whether it expands from a real threat like somebody from syria or somewhere over there or I hear what you're saying yes what you're afraid of is once you permit an overbearing government to gain control over an information superhighway in su to such an extent, it could then be used to control those amongst us who are the victims rather than the perpetrators of terrorism. Isn't that what you're saying? That is ex that's my biggest fear. No, it's, it's a <laughs> rational fear. It's a rational fear given that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's a rational fear. Then how about saying 
uh, Muslims who engage in terror will not be able to use the Internet. You can't do that, can you? Because that's racial profiling. You, you can't do that. How about 